All right. This unit is simple harmonic motion, so we're going to start talking about that. Uh, the first thing that we need to talk about, though, is oscillatory motion. An oscillation is just one complete cycle. Oscillatory motion is any motion that repeats at regular intervals. So if you drop a ball and it bounces on the ground and it continues to bounce on the ground, that's oscillatory motion. One oscillation would be the ball starting at the top, hitting at the bottom, and returning to the top. So, the period is the time it takes for one oscillation. The time needed for one complete cycle of our motion. We're going to call that the period. We can use a timer to get it. It's measured in seconds. That's all there is to that. So, an example of oscillatory motion would be the Earth's orbit. That is a repeated motion over and over and over again, and it has a period of one year. That's how we would measure the period. That's how long it takes for one complete motion. Simple harmonic motion is a special type of oscillatory motion. It's specific and has two requirements to be simple harmonic. The first requirement is that the object has to move because of something called a restoring force. The second condition is that it, the object oscillates around an equilibrium position. So it's going around a set position every single time, moving back and forth across it. So, that's right, restoring forces are important. Restoring force is a force that's going to pull an object opposite to the displacement. So if you stretch out a spring, the force pulls it back. That's a restoring force. It wants to restore to what it was before. A restoring force pulls an object back to its starting place. For us, in simple harmonic motion, a restoring force pulls an object back towards the equilibrium. If you don't have a restoring force, you don't have simple harmonic motion. And the next thing is the equilibrium position. Equilibrium position is the place where the force of uh, our net force is equal to zero. So a location where the net force is zero. At, at the equilibrium position, we do not have any acceleration. So let's look at a little bit um, of an example. Here we have a mass on a spring. And so right now, that's the equilibrium position before we do anything to it. So we'll just draw a line all the way across to see the equilibrium position. Now we're going to pull that mass down and let it go. And that mass is going to go up, and then it's going to come back down. So if we look at each one of those spots... Now the first one, where we start, that's a turnaround spot. That's where we begin. So initially the velocity is zero, and the spring pulls us back up. So that means right there the spring force is bigger than the weight. Now as the thing moves up, we get to that equilibrium position. And my velocity is up at that point. And then the next spot we get up to the velocity is now zero, and the acceleration is down because it's about to head down. Then we get back to equilibrium again where the acceleration is zero, and my velocity is down. Then we make it to the bottom where the velocity is zero, and my acceleration is up. That's our simple harmonic motion. If we wanted to, we could kind of connect those dots. That's what a position versus time path is going to look like for the motion of this object on a spring. It's part of a sinusoidal curve, or a sine graph, or a cosine graph. It's that nice, smooth, repeating sine wave, is what we call it. Now, just to note, the uh, distance from equilibrium to our maximum displacement is called the amplitude. So, we're going to talk about these graphs a little bit more. I just thought I'd, I'd look at all that. So... I just kind of want to draw on there that the net force is equal to zero. So on the top, we have the position versus time graph, where we're bouncing between our maximum and our minimum position according to that nice sinusoidal 
graph. That's what a simple harmonic motion graph looks like. The next one is the velocity versus time graph. And if you look at it, you'll notice that when we were at the equilibrium position where the red line starts at the top, uh, for velocity, that's a maximum negative velocity. That's when we're moving down very fast. In fact, every time we're at an equilibrium position, we have a maximum velocity. Then, when we're at maximum displacement, if you'll notice right here at 50 seconds, we have zero velocity. And every time we're at a maximum displacement, we have zero velocity. Get rid of some of these. Oh, well, that just, that just went too fast. And then we can look down at the acceleration versus time graph. And you'll notice that when my velocity is zero, I've got maximum acceleration every single time. And when my velocity is at a maximum, I have zero acceleration. You're going to need to know these graphs. We'll do an activity, or we'll already have done an activity that has us look a little bit closer at the relationship between the position versus time graph and the velocity versus time graph. It's important to know how they change. Notice that they're shifted. We get maximum velocity when our position is zero, and we get zero velocity when our position is a maximum, because our maximum position is the turning around points. Now, Let's look at a couple more things to kind of drive those home. So here's a graph of where the position is going to be just kind of all laid out right there. We have in red when we're at the equilibrium position and in blue when we're at our negative amplitude and our positive amplitude. Now. Again, x equals 0, that's the middle equilibrium position that we're moving around. The acceleration there is equal to 0, and the velocity is a maximum. At that first amplitude all the way to the left, that's when we have maximum acceleration because my spring is compressed the most, and it's pushing me back towards equilibrium now. But that's where I'm also turning around. So my velocity is equal to 0 at that point. And then over at the other amplitude, we have maximum acceleration. That's where the spring is pulling us back. And the velocity is equal to zero because that's a turning around point. Another thing to keep in mind as we do this is that there is energy involved in simple harmonic motion. And in simple harmonic motion, we get a trade between kinetic energy and potential energy. And this is going to be true for all types of simple harmonic motion. We have our maximum potential energy when we're at our maximum amplitude. And we have our maximum kinetic energy at the equilibrium position. Equilibrium is where we move fastest. And at one of those amplitudes is where we have the most potential energy, usually because we're not moving. So the formula for spring potential at that spot is 1 half kx squared. So my maximum spring potential would be 1 half k times the amplitude squared. And my maximum kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And we can set those two equal to each other to figure out what our maximum speed is based on our maximum displacement. We're going to do some practice with this. Uh, and mostly, this is just practice and understanding. So there are not going to be a ton of notes with this unit.